Jefficus. Okay, all right, cool. So uh, he's made a few videos on Dark Tide, whatever. So basically, real quick, we're going to be rating these nodes based on how good they are, but not in a vacuum. We're going to consider how well they are, like, in the current metagame and where they're placed on the tree and the opportunity cost of taking them, etc. Also, we're going to have a list for people like me that are, like, 1,000 hours in the game and only care about objective 1% better optimizations and casual players who don't give a fuck and they have, like, 200 hours in the game. Okay, Let's go. so, Shroudfield. Shroudfield. This, this is broken. Shroudfield is the strongest thing in the game, and it's not even close. There is a reason why all the players that do solos play Zealot. There is a reason why all the toxic people tend to pick Zealot. It's because they pick this, and it enables a playstyle where you can either effortlessly solo carry the game, or you fail miserably. A lot of people fall into that fail miserably category, but even despite that, this is still S tier even for casual players because the ability to just click one button, say, fuck it, I'm out of here, I don't have to deal with anything anymore, and I get a shit ton of damage on, like, effectively a four-second cooldown, it just makes it so no matter how bad you play, you always have a get-out-of-jail-for-free button. It's also just in a really good spot of the tree, too. Yes, that's another thing. It's a, that in is a really, really great spot. It's because it's right next to throwing knives. Really, the only problem with Shroudfield is that it's next to fucking Loner. So you have to go all the way to the left to come back. Really, if Benediction was in a better spot, like Duelist Benediction, then Zealot would be so overpowered compared to every other class, there'd be no reason to not pick them. Uh, the book. For tryhard players, the book is like, it's either D tier or strictly for fun. I don't know anyone who uses this in any capacity, especially in the current patch, because after Locked and Loaded, the one build with this that people were using isn't used anymore, like at all. Uh, for casual players, this is really good, because you're giving gold, gold toughness. Gold toughness is good. Yep. Gold toughness makes it so the skill level needed to not take a bunch of damage lowers dramatically. Like, you can be a, let's say you're a 2 out of 10 on the skill, like, spectrum player. You can straight up, with just a little bit of gold toughness, play at a 2 out of 10 level, but you are getting results as if you were, like, a 5 or a 6 out of 10. Gold toughness is, like, one of the biggest force multipliers in the game, and it fundamentally breaks just about everything. Also, the placement on the tree for it is fucking terrible. You have to go down the Beacon of Purity route. There is not a single perk... Uh, around Beacon of Purity. You don't want Immolation Grenades ever. You don't want Beacon of Purity almost ever. So you have to divert and waste points getting it. Uh, charge. Charge is, I think, for a tryhard player, it's only okay. It's really well placed on the tree. You just go straight Stunstorm Grenade, Duelist, Benediction, right into Fury. But so you can't really run Flamer with it all that well because you either have to waste a bunch of points if you want to take Blades of Faith. You know, you want to get Blades of Faith and Momentum. You want to do the, the meta thing. So its placement on the tree isn't the greatest, and the actual effect isn't all that good, if I'm being honest. It's nice, but Shroudfield just does everything it does but better. Think about it. Shroudfield guarantees a crit. Shroudfield, like, quadruples the crit damage. Shroudfield gives you 40% toughness back with the one node. So the only thing, Fury, Fury of the Faithful, the only thing it does is gives a very small stun around an area and gives you 20% attack speed. Okay, like, I don't care at all about that, frankly. I would say that it makes some uh, weapons that a lot of Zealots would consider to be a little bad or off-meta. Um, just a bit better, but the issue is that the knife and the dueling sword exist. Yeah, uh, for casual players, I still think it's a B tier. Because if you want a selfish ultimate, just pick stealth. It's better in every way. If you want a supportive ultimate, you want the stun support part, then just take the book. If you want a little bit of offense, a little bit of defense, maybe it can stun, like, you know... You can, like, charge into, like, a mutant and instantly kill it or whatever. Then I guess it's fine. It's not like it's bad. You're not, like, gimping the team by using it. It's just not good. Yeah. Okay. And a good player is still going to find use out of it, too. Like, it's not going to be completely useless. Okay, Psyker. The shield for organized play, strictly for fun. This, this is, this is bad. 
There is virtually no reason to use the shield if you are a sweaty tryhard and you're playing with other sweaty tryhards. Once you have like a thousand hours in the game, you should be good enough and so used to playing without the shield that it doesn't matter if every single enemy is like an elite gunner. You should be able to effectively deal with that without any kind of support just based on your movement and positioning. So if you are like any kind of tryhard, this is completely unviable. It offers literally nothing for you. However, it also on, encourages the team to limit their movement. On the other, which you never really yeah, want to do. Yeah, that's actually a huge problem if you're like duoing, because if the less offensive power you have, the more you need to be able to move to create space. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, this is this is like fucking A tier, maybe even S tier for like pubs. Even though I hate seeing it in pubs. If you're playing with randos, it is a giant, please just fucking stand here, beacon. It's like, here, you don't have to worry about gunners, you don't have to worry about positioning, and you get a bit of toughness. A good player using shield with randoms can just straight up through the, the process of the shield being a beacon guide way, like, not-so-great players to victory. So I think in that regard, it's really good. Okay, Scryer's Gaze is legitimately broken if you are tryhard. This is the only thing that might be more broken than this in Shroudfield, and that's purely because Shroudfield is a unlimited, I don't have to think or worry about taking damage button. Whereas Scryer's Gaze is such overwhelm, Dude, when I play with people from like Dot's Reject Hub, mind you, we're talking people with like 3,000 plus hours in the game and have done like two, 300 plus Oryx solos. When I play with even those people and I'm playing Scryers, they're like, dude, this isn't even fun. Like, I literally don't get to do anything because you just move so fast and deal so much damage. Let's put it this way. If you are a significantly good player, then Scryers is such a massive force multiplier that it effectively turns off the ability for other people to play the game because you're moving so fast, you get control over every single pickup. You have first pick at all the ammo, first pick on all the stims, first pick on everything. You'll get to Medicaid first. You get to dictate the pace of everything, and everyone else just has to keep up. Now, this can lead to a very toxic and shitty play style that absolutely nobody wants to deal with. Which is why for pubs, if you're a casual with like 200 hours, this kind of sucks. I'm not going to lie. Like, you need to be fundamentally good at the game to make Scryer's Gaze work. Let's say you're playing Gunsiker, but you have like 100 hours and you're like a level 32, like a true level 32 Psyker. You're probably just going to waste a bunch of ammo, steal it from your team. You're not going to do anything. You're going to probably do less damage than some of your teammates that are playing easier builds. And God forbid you make a single mistake with Scryer's Gaze. It just creates this cascade of like, you're probably going to go down. So I think Scryers, I think Scryers is one of those things where you can tell a lot about someone and how they just think about video games from how they rate it. So one thing that you learn, especially if you ever get into esports like I was, more damage and glass cannon setups are always the objectively best way to play. Why do you think whenever in like League of Legends, a support item that massively increases damage comes around and is like not shitty, it always becomes the de facto meta like pump gold into support so they can get that item online immediately. Because snowballing your damage is the only thing that matters in any video game ever. You know, why do you think like the opera is so important in CSGO? Um, okay, this, this, this thing, I forget the name, the, the Psyker Force Push. For tryhards, this is like, dude, I don't know, Jeff, what do you it's think? It's good. It's, it's I mean, either, it's, it's either S or A, like. It's, uh, it's got the placement in the tree, it's right next to the nodes you're gonna be taking if you're running any of the staffs. True. It's good crowd control, it's a good source of Soul Blaze, like, it's just. This is good. Oh, one thing I need to mention, by the way, the only thing stopping this from, like, getting its own special tier at the very top of the list is its awful placement on the tree. This is on the far right, and, like, none of Psyker's good nodes are over there. A sail is over there, which is garbage. You can't take Psykinetic's aura if you're sticking to the right side. So you have to stick hard left, then make a hard right into this, which is kind of the same problem as Shroudfield. Really, if, if these two had any better placement on their respective skill trees, they would be so disgustingly overpowered, you wouldn't be able to play the game if someone had like a thousand hours and was using them on your team. 
But uh, this... <laughs> Dude, these builds aren't too far off these builds in terms of how good they are. Yeah, Vending Streak is also S in casual play, too, I would say. Yeah, honestly, like it's, I think It's just think so right. easy to set and forget. <clears throat> yeah, you literally just have to click the button when it's glowing. You click the button, yep. you apply six Soul Blaze stacks, you get all the Soul Blaze synergy. It does a fuck ton of damage. And since a lot of people, especially more casual players, love Uncanny Strike, Uncanny Strike stacks so fucking well with Soul Blaze in particular that... If it, a lot of people are already going to be using that, so like, you know, it also just works so well with warp siphon. Yes, like it which works is, which so is, yeah, well yeah. with the keystone that it's right next to. This is so strong because you click it one time, you stun everything. You click it one time, you apply like a total, you apply like a one thousand damage dot on everything, which goes up if you're using uncanny. Which, God, the fact that Uncanny stacks onto... Uncanny and Bleed is, like, whatever. It's, it's like, okay at best. But Uncanny and Soul Blaze, that is where it's, like, holy fuck. But, um, anyways. Yeah, I, I just don't see any way where Venting Shriek isn't, you know... It's all... It's, it's just the ease of use. The fact that yeah. you just have to click your staff, like, three times, then click this once, and you get significant immediate value. It, it's so good. Okay, now we're moving on to the veteran abilities. Veteran stealth. I think we're going to have slightly different opinions on this. I think for Probably, tryhards, yeah. I think this is only A tier. But yes. this is a little weird for me because it's obviously not as good as Shroudfield. But it's not. Shroudfield, I feel like, is so good that it's kind of in a league of its own. So maybe this does deserve S tier. But it's so the reason why this is rated so highly. Uh, by us, like, sweat lords with thousands of hours and stuff, is purely the fact that it's stealth, and stealth literally just breaks the game. Even if it doesn't provide any other buffs, just having the ability to click stealth, come out of it, like, click stealth, do an objective, come out of it, click stealth again, like, that just provides so much value. It's also really important to mention here, Veterans Node um, Tactical Awareness, the six-second ability cooldown reduction on special kill, like, dude, it is so easy for you to pop this, kill, like, five varied specials, and just have it ready to go again. And then you consider all the benefits that stealth gives. Really, I think the thing that's stopping this from being S tier is it's fucking dog shit placement on the skill tree. Exactly, yep. You don't that's want... you exactly you what nev I was gonna say. You never want smoke grenades. You never want close and kill. You almost never want weapon specialist. Like, holy fuck, dude. To, to take this... Like, if you wanted to make an optimal build with this... I mean, look, look at this shit. You would have to, like... You know, you'd have to, like, go here, 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 here. Like, down here, 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 here. This is complete... Like, these are completely wasted. So you gotta waste one, two, three, four... Four fucking skill points you gotta waste to take this. Whereas Shout, you know, is like you only waste a skill point to take it. And it's arguably not even a waste. Uh, I will say for casual players, Veteran Stealth is kind of really not great. Because one, unless you know better, you are gonna get tricked into taking a really shitty build. Because you're probably gonna build this stuff that's like on this side of the tree when you really don't want to. It's not intuitive to like go all the way down here, then hard pivot, then like pivot back. You know, that's more of a zealot player thing. And when the worse you are at the game, the less you're able to do with stealth just in general. What, what were you going to say? Uh, there, One of the things is that a lot of casual players are going to be going to YouTube to try to find some of the best builds that are going to carry them through lobbies. And one of the things that those builds is always going to say is that the veteran tree is very bottom heavy. Very, very bottom heavy. Oh, yeah. Heavy. It's and incredibly And when bottom. you... When you waste points going for infiltrate in pub lobbies or just in regular Arc Maelstrom, then you're not going to have enough points to get some of the more important nodes oh, at yeah. the bottom of the tree. Yeah, think about that. So look, look, look. If you want to take the best grenade and the best aura, you have to then spend, like you said, one, two, three. So you got to spend like four points to get there and then come back. Look at what you could take for four points. You know, superiority, fully loaded, precision strikes. Like, okay, 45% fucking damage versus elites, that's gone. Or maybe you give up 20% boss damage and 50% damage reduction. Maybe you give up unlimited stamina. Or maybe you give up, where is it, 40% brittleness, so rending for your whole team. You know, maybe you're, you know, 40% 
brittleness that so 40% rending for everyone at all times. You're going to give that up so you can stealth. And then look at what this stealth actually does. All it does is give you movement speed. Zealot stealth quadruples your damage. So even if you're not great at the game, you can just pop this, hit once, and there you go. That's like getting like eight fucking criticals back to back. Whereas this, you need to put in work for this. This works for you. Yeah, I've always thought that Infiltrate should act exactly how... Uh, Kruber's Huntsman's ability in yeah. works, where it just keeps you in in the more the headshots time, you get, oh my lets god, lets you pop off. I've always thought that it should work like that. I don't know why it doesn't. Yeah, dude, if it was just the Huntsman alt, holy fuck. Okay, Marksman's focus. This is kind of bad. It's kind of not good. Like, and the better you are at the game, the worse it gets. Do I want this in B or C tier? Because it kind of hovers around here. I feel like it's almost the exact same. As, as fury of the faithful fury of the faithful yeah, yeah like everything uh, but said for the veterans applies. yeah 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 i i honestly i kind of i will say i think it's a lot better for casuals i think it's yeah. literally just press a button uh everything is highlighted for you do a bunch more damage can't get suppressed really good synergy with the plasma gun which is like the most casual friendly gun there is yep and if you're if you're the kind of player that you know you want to use like the columnist or something or i think it's called the vrax now if you're the kind of player that wants to use that, but you have trouble with your aim, you're you're not the best FPS player in the world, then this is going to solve your problems for you. Like it's it's just going to be an I win button for you, um, and it's going to make you have a lot of fun and kill a lot of things. Yeah, so. that's the other thing that uh, I'm keeping in mind for the casual player list. How fun is it to use this? Like it is not fun to sit in stealth that doesn't do anything for you. It's a lot of fun to click a button and just feel like you have 20 seconds of like like you turned on cheat engine. You do a shit ton of damage. You know where everything is. You know, it's like Soldier 76 Ultimate. It's the same reason why all, like, new players get attracted to that character. So, yeah, I definitely think this is a good alt for casuals. Uh, this, however, is... Oh, my God. So good. Too this, good. I don't... Do I even need to talk about this? It's got God-tier placement on the tree. Field improv. Godlike. Demo stockpile. Godlike. It has... It's right above this shit. The best, like vert part of the vet bottom tree you know like this is gold toughness you just spam it on cooldown and you know what this is going to be the first broken thing for casuals as well yes so, this will carry lobbies for for tryhards i dude for all my fellow like thousand two thousand plus hour players you guys already know i don't even need to talk about this for 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 casuals gold toughness stops toughness bleed through damage this gives you a full bar of gold toughness and it's like this gives you over cap toughness so this gives you like 50 percent more toughness and it's like there is a theoretical world where like really low toughness is like optimal but you need to be like literally an ai level of precisely good to make it work and it's just not something anyone ever does and even they're just it's only like so many things optimal. So that having, voice of command covers. Yeah, and ha well, hold on real quick. Having all, having more toughness is generally for a fucking human always going to be significantly better. And this just gives you for a lot of classes like fifty percent more toughness, and it stops like pox bursters from doing damage to the team, stops snipers from doing damage to the team, all the like stupid shit that like instantly ends a run when players aren't paying attention or aren't the greatest. This just stops all of it. Just one button, I win. Knocks everything over. Has like a 30 second cooldown. So let's say you're using as you should. You should always be using triple cooldown reduction on your Kyrios. Uh, plus tactical awareness. Plus you have a Psyker with Seer's presence and Psychonetics aura. You'll literally be spamming this every like five seconds sometimes. And it's like, oh my god, one AOE stun that gives everyone 50% toughness and overcaps. Another stun that gives you another 50 toughness. Another stun, another stun, another stun. This, this node breaks the game at any level of play. And we, uh, the reason why we say that Veteran is such a bottom-heavy tree is because this synergizes with one point so well iron will yep you'll you'll hear anyone and everyone calling veterans absolutely immortal because of this oh, yeah. one talent the synergy Dude, is so this, strong this is gonna sound weird if you like are under 100 hours and you haven't like super delved into the game veteran is more tanky than the ogren veteran yep it has veteran has more toughness generation than the zealot the class that's all about that and he's tankier than the ogren Seriously, if you do that thing where you stack, like, triple toughness, plus shout, plus iron will, like, 
you're like sitting there with like 300 toughness that requires you to take double damage. You have like effectively like 800 toughness at that point. And it's just like, oh yeah. And then you also consider, Jeff, you forgot to mention, confirmed kill. You kill one elite. Absolutely. You yep. kill one elite, there's another 30% toughness. And this stacks. So you kill like five elites, you have five 20% toughness restores running at the same time. And then it's like, oh my god, you're generating like 50 toughness a second. That toughness is taking half damage. And because of gold toughness, not, no damage can bleed through. So even if you do get hit while during that regeneration, you're not going to take any health damage. Absolutely insane. Okay, uh, quick, real quick uh, disclaimer. I do not have valid opinions on Ogren. Do not take anything I say about Ogren super seriously. I do not play this class. I do not know much about this class. The only thing I know about this class is what people that I've played in like duos and challenge runs with have told me about it. Outside of that, I don't know shit. So uh I know Gunlugger's okay. <laughs> like yeah, like yeah. where where do you feel? Because you know a lot more about this class than me. I feel like it's A tier. I don't see Ogren's using it very often when I'm doing like duos. I see mm -hmm. a lot more taunt. But you've told me that this is really good, and people in my Discord have told me this is pretty good. Let me speak from a casual perspective first. I think okay. that's a better way to approach okay. this, because I do think that Ogren is a more casual class. No offense, guys. Um, the Man, this shit fucking... It can carry a lobby, but it could make everyone hate you so bad, because the Gunlugger is so ammo-intensive. Um, that you need to hog all the ammo, and in a way, you kind of want to, uh, because it just makes your damage pump. It's the same thing as Scryer's Gaze. Like, it's Gaze. so good. It's like Scryer's Gaze, yeah. Uh, it's it's easy Scryer's Gaze, though, because Ogren's, you don't have to aim. Uh, it's extremely generous. Most of your damage is being done through burns, anyways, whenever you take this, and it allows you to melt bosses in five to eight seconds. It's crazy. So where would you um, rank this? I'll let you rank these because I, I've never played it. I have not played with others that have really played it. So this one's all you. I would honestly rank it at... I would put it right in front of Executioner Stance. Just right in right. front of it. And then for tryhards, where would you place this? Uh, this would be in B. It basically makes Gunlugger playable in the tryhard space. Okay. Uh, but it's still not something that I would bring. Okay, now Taunt is something where I can actually start uh, weighing in again because Taunt has this really cool ability. Right right here. Right here it has this. 25% base damage from all sources. This is going in S tier. This is Ogren's yep. best ultimate. Do not fall for the trap of using this with a slab shield, then pressing it, and then going into the Taunt stance. Don't do that. That is the worst way to use this. The way that you use this is... Uh, oh, this is for casual players. But on, honestly, no, this is going in broken for casual. And this is going for S tier for tryhard. I'll explain why in a second. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, think of this as a everyone takes 25% more damage button. And honestly, dude, a lot of ultimates in this game, if that's just how they functioned, just, like, think about it. If Fury of the Fateful was just... Or, or think about this, Chorus of the Fateful book, if this was just press a button, all teammates get 25% more damage and restore 100 toughness for like 20 seconds, whatever, that'd be pretty fucking good. Like, you'd use that. So when you start thinking about it like that, it's pretty good. If you're a casual player, this is really good. Because the best thing that helps casuals is the ability to have to... Um, see, I'm not going to say think less, because that sounds a little toxic and like shitty. It's too... They, the mental stack. I, I assume everyone knows what the idea of the mental stack is. There's only so much things you can focus on at once. It relieves so, pressure. Yeah, relieves yeah, yeah. So I, I don't want. Team. I don't. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say this like a giant asshole. So like, it's you press this, and your teammates they don't have to worry about something running up to them and hitting them. They can just they hear you shout this. They back up and they can breathe. They can start thinking. They can play their game. They don't have to worry about the mechanics of the game. Only you do. And that is just, it's its as valuable as Veteran Shout. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's like a crutch in a way. Like, you can be not super, like, focused and dialed in, and you can still get huge benefits from this. And I think that is super valuable. And just for tryhards, it's just the ability to say, fuck it, everyone does a bunch more damage now. So, 
I see a lot of people using the charge, but I think the charge is a little bit worse than the taunt. So I think the thing with the charge is the position on the skill tree is really good. Like this yeah. left row is really, 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 really good. Bleed synergy on Ogryn is really, 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 really good. But remember, like I said, if you are like heavily disagreeing with me on this, you probably know more than I do about Ogryn. This is all secondhand experience. So, uh, you know, feel feel free to disagree. I will not argue with you on this. You disagree with me at all. Um, so the charge... I would absolutely agree for the sweaty tryhard player list because uh, from what I've done, because I've been practicing a lot of solo Auric Maelstrom Ogryn, uh, this is what you use to really just get through a run and to save yourself from a lot of sticky situations. Yeah, because um, like right it's here. It's been very you, useful. You click, you stagger, you apply a bunch of bleed, you get a bunch of damage reduction. You get your toughness back. Uh, yeah. I, I imagine, so the way that I've always viewed it is when doing a challenge or like a duo run, I just find it more valuable for all players to get a bunch of damage than one player to get, you know, to have a really strong button. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't have too much else to say about this. For casuals, though, this is, like, probably fucking S tier, dude. They just press a button, get a bunch of defense, get attack speed going. They just they don't have to think. They just press the button, you know, knock everything over. Well, actually, I don't know. You know what? Hold on. Actually, real quick, I just thought of something. I've seen a lot of casual Ogans press this at a bad time and get themselves killed with it. So I think, that, yeah. I think, that's, I think that's the only thing stopping it from going, like, higher, higher. You know what this list is making me realize? Dark Tide I, is Dark Tide's a really fucking good game because like all of this is, stuff yeah. is just really good for people who just want to play and have fun. There's very few things that are like an active detriment. You know, like cuz I'm seeing there's so much of this stuff that's high tier if you're uh, if you just want to have fun. Yeah, I was I was going to say move it into B, but I don't think it deserves to be in B because of where it is in the tree. Yeah, like dude, like it's just is... it's such a fortunate spot. Yeah, yeah, like if these were swapped, oh my fucking god. Oh my god, if these were swapped, oh, yeah. dude. But yeah, guys, for those of you who don't know, whenever you taunt shooters, shooters just run in. They stop shooting yes. and they run in right at you. They completely relieve that pressure from the team it's so good yeah think uh, about that always think, recommend attention seeker if you're using a shield because it just makes them a non-issue think about this real quick the juxtaposition between these two you place this down and it effectively does nothing but give you a bit of toughness regen whereas these both effectively turn off gunners this just also turns off everything else on top of that and makes everyone do 25 percent more damage to, to add some clarification, it does not work on gunners specifically, just shooters and shotgunners. The, oh, yeah, well, uh, the I, I, I have... call them all. Yeah, I just lump them all in as gunners. Gotcha. Okay, knives. For tryhards, knives so good. Knives are legitimately broken. And this, so is, this is where, all right, everybody get to clip this. All right, get ready, clip this. This is where Uncanny Strike becomes just crazy strong. Because yeah. the fact that you have flames and bleed and a throwing knife, and it applies to all three, only if you're using all three of those. But God, if you're using all three of those, oh my God, that's where Uncanny becomes like borderline overpowered. And that like one specific context where you've got multiple dots, be it um, Psyker, Soul Blaze stacking up to like 21 where you overcap the stacks, or Zealot where you have like three things benefiting from it. For everything else, it's fucking trash. But for those two circumstances, oh my God, it, it shines so hard. So, Throwing knives, they enable the flamer. And the flamer, despite what some people will tell you, is one of the best guns in Dark Tide. And it has been literally since the beta. Fun fact, did you know the meta loadout for Zealot, like the first week of the beta, was Thunder Hammer and Flamer? Just fun little yeah. fact. Yep. Literally, uh, I have an unlisted video that floats around occasionally on the Dark Tide Discord where it was like one of the first, or maybe the first, damnation double grimoire runs we did it like three days in like three days into the beta and i was playing zealot with thunder hammer and fucking flamer <laughs> but dude these things enable the flamer the flamer's biggest problem has always been what do you do if there's like a gunner that you can't get to well you pull out your knife that has uncanny stacks on it you throw a knife the knife penetrates the armor it gets a headshot and it one taps throwing knife if you are like a top, like an upper 10 percentile aim labs kind of person, the throwing knife basically enables the zealot. Watch a zealot play like telepots that can effectively use the throwing knife versus like Joe Schmo 
uh, speed running knife lord Reddit 360, 420, or 69, whatever, who gets downed really quickly because, you know, he'll run, then he'll run into a, like a gunner. He'll throw three knives, miss three of them, or just hit the body and go down. Whereas like a highly skilled player is just run in, turn the corner, flick to his head, throw, flick to the next guy, throw, flick to the next guy, throw. Three gunners dead before they even get a chance to shoot. Then there's a horde running in, pull out the flamer, kill the flamer. There's a boss running in, one shot it with the knife. The zealot can one shot bosses with the knife. The zealot can one shot almost all elite gunners with the throwing knife. And the zealot can clear all hordes in like under half a second with the flamer. The zealot is S plus tier at literally everything you could ever want. The best boss killer, one of the best gunner clearers, only worse than like a columnus vet or gun psyker, and one in like oh man, maybe the best horde clear. It's it's up there with like, you know, like trauma soul blaze. And the knife enables all of that. If you cannot master the thrumming knife, you will never be a master zealot player. Now, in that same vein, these things are fucking garbage if you aren't good at aiming. Because if you yep. don't get a headshot, it does no damage. You need to hit, like, four of them to kill an elite. If you don't stack up uncanny, then you need, like, two headshots to kill, like, an armored gunner. So you need to be running specific elements of your build. You need to have specifically high uptimes on them. And you need to be able to consistently click on heads with a projectile that fucking arcs and has travel time. Trust yep. me, dude. You're not that guy. That's like fucking masters with like Kiriko in Overwatch, you know, kind of thing. So if you aren't interested in putting in that kind of time, then don't even bother with it. You are, it's not going to do anything for you. Okay. Uh, oh my God. All of these grenades look so similar. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's do let's do Stunstorm next. Okay, Stun cool, Storm. cool, cool. Stunstorm's good. Yeah. Stunstorm for tryhards is worse than the throwing knife. It's either A or S tier. It's nah, it's definitely low A tier. And honestly, as time goes on, I'm liking these less and less. It has terrible They're, position on the skill tree. It's a uh, it's it's completely uh, like on the opposite side of the fence for casual play. No, hold on, In hold on. You know play, what? You know what? You know what? It's right above Duelist, though. Mm. Mm. That's kind of what makes it really good. Yeah, all right, fine. I was going to consider dropping yeah. it to B tier for tryhards because I'm thinking, like, the utility that it provides just... It is good. There are times when your back is forced against a wall and you just have, like, 20 seconds of a stun, and it's, a, and it's not like Smite where it's a stun that disables you from the game while you're stunning. It's a stun that allows you to do more during the stun on top of all it's your set teammates. It's yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just I think man, it's just the nodes above it fucking suck. Yeah. Like they're really yeah. fucking bad. Like vicious offering is terrible. Bleed for the Emperor is like the worst thing ever. God, I let's put it this way. I'm on the fence of the top of B tier, the low end. If there was a B plus tier, it would be there. Just because the placement is ah. Okay, now uh immolation grenades. I have never seen a single use. Oh, wait, fuck. Hold on. I forgot for casuals. Lol. So casuals, stun storm. Where the fuck are you? There it is. This shit is S tier. The ability to just like Jeff said, sit it and forget it. And you just drop it. You move on. You don't have to worry about your teammates going down. You don't have to worry about your teammates doing anything. They can all just focus on clearing out the area and you get three of them motherfuckers. Oh my God. Yep. That is so valuable for casuals. And this is this is truly going to save a run as well. Uh, there are a lot of casual players who struggle with things like crusher packs, and oh, yeah. this just makes those extremely easy, just extremely easy to deal with. Um, and for the those of you who are running something like Fear of the Faithful, it'll end up saving you more points in the talent tree in the end, and so you'll be you'll be able to get more value out of it. <sighs> now, immolation grenades. These kind of suck, especially if you don't have uncanny stacked up. They do nothing versus armor. So yep. they don't. these just don't provide you anything. If you're going to play the meta knife flamer zealot, your biggest problem is specials that are just out of reach. Throwing knives cover that. Maybe you want to stun them because you want the team utility. What does immolation provide? It does less damage than the flamer. It works in a smaller radius than the flamer. It only is good versus trash mobs which are the least threatening things you can clear them with the knife or the flamer 
So it's like, there's just no value in these, like, at all. I, I mean, that's really all it is. They just do so little damage. They just kind of suck. They won't help you kill a boss. They won't help you do just about anything. For me, it's it's really just the placement that gets me for oh, yeah. the Emulation Grenade. Dude, um, if honestly, Emulation Grenade and Stun Storm were swapped, that would be That's another awesome. thing to mention. Anointing Blood is great. Anointing gut Blood is pretty good. Purge the Unclean is okay, but Restoring Faith, fucking terrible. Voice of Terra, absurdly bad. Like, these, it, it has bad skills above it, and yeah. it's got bad skills below it. Hold on, look at this, look at this. This skill is not that good. This skill is really fucking bad. And there's literally no reason to ever pick, like, any, any, anything here at all. So you've got to waste a skill point here. You've got to waste a skill point here to go over here or over here. And then it's like, oh, man, like, uh, I don't know about that one. Jeez. This this middle part of the tree needs to uh, it needs a needs fucking rework, some major it needs. rebalancing. Yeah. So uh, I think if you're trying to pump blood from a stone and get like absolute like 0.1% top zealot play, there is never a reason to ever bring these. I think for casuals, they're a lot better, though. I'd say they're like mid. They can just throw them in a choke point and just get some damage and not get overwhelmed. I think that's like okay. Yeah. They're, I, I, they're, I agree with that. They're they're definitely just just mid. Um, I would even maybe even put them in C tier just because of the yeah. other options that exist in the game that do the same thing. The flamer is going to do the same thing. The yeah, but a, lo a lot of cas a lot of casuals don't want to use the flamer because the flamer comes with limitations. That's you know, true. If you're that's bringing true. the flamer, yeah. you if you're bringing the flamer and you're not like sweaty enough to use knives then you have to depend on your teammates to deal with gunners and i don't think any casual is going to want to do that yeah and i'm sure there are a lot of people where like their favorite setup is emulation grenade and revolver or something yeah 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 right like, in like, casual like, play yeah so. like eviscerator revolver emulation grenade yeah, yeah which i mean honestly that's not a bad setup if you're a casual like it's gonna no, work it's, it's gonna do fine in maelstrom like it's not a bad setup it's just you know it's, it's just good <laughs> you know yeah it's just good Okay, uh, let's do Psyker next. Yeah, Psyker. Okay, all right. Psyker. Uh, Brain Burst for tryhards. It's... N it's... No, I can't give it S tier. Honestly, I can I can hardly give it A tier. This is what, like, virtually all the tryhards are going to use, like, duos and solos. But that's not because you want to use it. Psyker doesn't have a good blitz. Well, let's just get that out of the way. Uh, if we were rating these in a vacuum of, like, how good they are, it would be boom, bam, bop. There you go. No, honestly, it'd be boom, bam, bop. There you go. The Psyker Blitzes <laughs> are not good. Like, as a tool to use often, they're terrible. But that's not how we're going to rate these. So, Brain Burst, as a tool that you pull out, like, when you need it, provides some utility that you can't really get unless you're using, like, the Surge Staff or, like, yep. a long-ranged gun, like a LAS gun or whatever. So, you know... This gives you some tech in like you can slot, you can pull it out, slide, charge it, pre charge it around corners. Like it, it gives you something to do. Uh, for casuals, I think this is just bad. I mm -hmm. think you'll get more damage doing everything else. You are not going to preemptively charge this, then slide around a corner and just use it as fuck it free damage and build some peril so you can benefit from your peril nodes and frankly that's like that's why this is as high as it is by the way for tryhards psyker has so many nodes that sync with peril really well you yeah. know like like all this shit like get toughness back on generating peril and stuff and then losing peril and do more damage at high peril take less damage at high peril so preemptively charging this and then cashing it in on the first elite you see doesn't slow you down at all and builds, like, 30% peril, which gives you, like, 20% damage reduction and, like, 10% more damage. So it just gives you something to do. Uh, smite is garbage. <laughs> this shit is garbage. I'm going to tell you want to know my opinion on smite. If you use smite, this is basically what, what I have to say to you. you. You can't get any better, I promise you. The skill level you're at right now, you're a deal forever. You're trash. You can't get better. There is nothing you can do with Smite to make it play well better. There is nothing you can do with Smite outside of pulling it out in a clutch situation to buy time for your teammates to do something, which the better you are, think about it like this. 
everything is a pie chart of how much contribution your you and your teammates are making. So smite, smite is not good. <laughs> the better you are as a player, taking yourself out of the fight to hold enemies still, enemies that the better you are, the faster die. So let's say you are doing 50% of the team's contribution in like a random game and you're a tryhard. Why would you, if you stop to smite, you are taking away 50% of the team's effectiveness just so you can help people that combined are doing as much or less than you. And when you sat, when it sounded out like that, it's like, damn, this is, this is bad. The only time I see smite used in any like tryhard capacity is you throw it on because it's dead set in the middle. So you just yep. grab it to grab it. And then like, if there's a situation where like you guys just made a drop down and like five crushers spawned in like the spawn point right next to the drop down fat shark, please remove that shit. Thank you. Yeah, it's like if it's like a vermintide when chaos patrols. You guys remember when Cataclysm came out and there was that annoying bug that they never fixed when Vermintide 2 was released, where some chaos patrols like uh like you guys remember the fucking convoction of decay right before the end event? There's like that big cave and like there's the drop down with the cave bridge right before all the you get all the healing. There's like a tome right there. Yeah, you do that first drop down where the healing is. And then you hear, like, your next Southlander. You turn around, and there's, like, eight Chaos Warriors behind you because that's their spawn point. And it's like, oh, my God. Fat Shark, please. So unless that happens to you, you pretty much never use Smite. Uh, however, for casuals, this, this is, like, the Dude, holy grail. This it's is actually really good. Yeah, this this is, casuals. like, this is, like, the holy grail. For if you if you are if you're the kind of person who's like I don't fucking care it's a video game you sound like an idiot I don't want to be good I don't want to think I don't want to focus brother pull out pull more yeah, power pull to you smite, dude. pull out pull, pull, it out pull it out bro whip that motherfucker yeah. out and just carry your team to victory you know like smite smite is op because I uh, I started playing with more how do I say this in a way that doesn't make me come off like an asshole lower hours players with just me. To, just to, yeah, uh, I started playing with like lower hour players just to like get a feel for their opinions on some of this stuff. Man, dude, Smite is like, bro. If this game had a ranking system, if you're a master's rank, Smite has like a twenty percent win rate for all my like league players out there. But if you're like a bronze player, this shit is like a ninety percent win rate. I can't believe I just said like competitive like games and it gives me like fucking whatever. Um, dude, Google, dude, the, dy the, dy the dystopia, the, the, the dystopia is real. I'm getting fed tailored ads in real time because of something I said on Discord five picoseconds ago. Anyway, uh, Smite for tryhards is also or not Smite. Uh, a sale is pretty bad. It's it's got so the biggest problem with a sale is this right here. Boom, bam, bop. Bing, you can't take this now. This is the best, like, single skill point in the entire game. So get fucked, retard, have a good day. A sale yep. is strong. It's fine, like, as a skill, and it's really fun. Now, you know what? I might just put it down here. I'm, I'm, I personally love a sale, okay? I will play games on stream with a sale because I enjoy it. I think it is a fun thing to do. I actually have been playing Scryer's Gaze a sale, and I've been enjoying it, goddammit. <laughs> I've been enjoying it. High risk, it. high reward. Yeah, it's fun. It, it's like gambling. It's literally like gambling, yeah. dude. It is fucking it is. fun. But, man, <laughs> why? They, the problem is that they gutted it too much when they nerfed it uh, right after they released it. Yeah. And they need to move Psychonetics Aura into the middle of the tree. They need to. They they should just Or or they, they or roll they it need... into Seer's presence. Yeah. Roll it yeah. into Seer's no, presence. No, I would just I would just make it Seer's presence. Make this yeah. get rid of Seer's presence, make this Seer's presence and then make this like another burn synergy because it's in like this burn path. That's what they need to fucking do. Yes. Okay, if you are a casual though, this shit is fucking broken. There are so many like just use a sale and dominate Mailstorm builds out there that actually work. And I'm saying they work if you, like, are a casual. Like, if you're a good player, you're going to sit there and be like, oh, my God, you know, you can't do anything versus armor. Like, what the fuck? But, um, yeah, exactly. You know, if I had to rate this in a vacuum purely on its effectiveness, by the way, I would give it, like, a B tier. 
just because it's like it's really good at clearing trash it's good to just dump your peril into but like there's more important things to be doing but god damn is it fun it's fun. So fun it's very fun it's effective like it's it's effective enough that you're not holding your team back when you use it it's a it's fun to use did I mention that it's fun? It makes really satisfying sounds, dude. Yeah, and I know, pop, 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 pop. like I know that the people who actually care about the casual player list, the normies like me, uh, they actually like it when things are popping off on the fucking screen. It's like, oh, smite dude, yeah, and a sail. yeah, yeah, they it's look so fucking cool. amazing. Yeah, dude, a sail is one of those things that even though it's like theoretically terrible, it is so fucking fun that even the most giga tryhard like me can't help but smile whenever I'm using it. I like dude, oh, I, yeah. listen to my voice. I'm getting like giddy just talking about a sale. Like I want to get on the game right now and play a sale. Like that that's that's I I like it. Whatever. Okay. Uh, we got to move on. I can't sit here and suck off a sale anymore. Bro, you might as well finish. You already started sucking it off. Like, damn. <laughs> okay. So now we have veteran grenades. Yes. Any any questions? Yes. A any nope. questions? So, if you are a tryhard, these things are legitimately overpowered. So, one, they give some 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 credence to uncanny strike on veteran. I think that's a terrible idea. Please don't ever do that, by the way, because uh, this node exists and is just forty percent rending for everyone. But if you were gonna do it, then you kind of have to take these. So these knock everything over so they stun everything for at least four seconds that's strong that's solid they add six stacks of bleed which is like you know that's like like 30 40 percent of the bleed cap i off the top of my head i'm forgetting the number because i'm stupid this stacks dude you can literally just tag with the columnus tag guys or honestly the real optimal way and i show this in a video drop a shredder so that they all get knocked over as it's warming up pull out the columnus and just, they all got 40% on them. That bleed is ticking for like 300. Drop another one on them so that they get knocked down again as soon as they stand up. There you go. You just killed five crushers with like, you know, you just killed five crushers with one magazine and two grenades. And like, they couldn't even move. So you have the smite stunning effect. You have the damage bleed through effect. This shit is legitimately overpowered. Then you consider it has great placement on the skill tree. It's right above like so the, good. It's right above like the best aura. It's you know you can get there from this shit. You get the range damage boost. Like this is, fuck man, this is in a really good place. This is super good. And also, because you get to carry three of them, this is a big problem of cracks. Because you get to carry three of them, if you're using like demo stockpile. And demo team, which on Mailstorm you should. Demo team adds like the same amount of grenades as demo stockpile on the average yep. Mailstorm run. So this is like 40, 50 extra grenades. Big problem with cracks is if you're holding two, let's say you're holding two grenades. You 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 have this going off. So let's say you're holding two, then you throw one, you proc demo team, you go back to two, it resets this cooldown. Not having three grenades kills crack grenades as a good option. They are fucking garbage because that you don't have three of them. And uh, you will probably never see another veteran mention that because this is like one of the highest skill. Grenade management is what makes, you know, if I was a good demo, man, I would be discussing it with you kind of kind of deal. Because you need to be managing this shit. You need to be on top of it. You need to be like, okay, I have two grenades. Uh, I'm 30 seconds away from a demo stockpile refill. There's seven elites running at us. I need to throw a grenade now. Demo team procced. I'm now five seconds away. I got to throw another one. Because you never want to be at two grenades when demo team procs because it resets demo stockpile. So you got to be aware of your demo stockpile timer. You got to be aware of how many elites and specials are about to die. And you got to be aware of how many grenades you have. Then you got to find a good opportunity to use them. Seriously, shredders are so powerful in their effect, they are so well placed on the tree, and they single-handedly give this whole, like, high skill ceiling minigame on Veteran. This is, like, the perfect node. Uh, for casuals, I think, I think they're just alright. They're like, no, nah, I think they're B tier, honestly, for casuals, because the lower level you think about the game, the more you look at it as... I throw like nine grenades in a in a run and they do like a small amount of damage and they do a small little bleed dot. Okay. 
you know, from a min maxer's yeah. perspective, you're like, this shit can be. I can stagger these out so that they perma stun lock everything. I can combine this with my tree and or perks on my weapon or blessings. I'm sorry, so that I can amplify the damage to where each grenade does like a thousand damage. I can yada yada, you know, this that the other thing, you know. Yeah, I I would still say that it's a though because I mean the stun can we get, is can so we, useful. Can we get this out of the way right now? So I think that crack grenades for casuals are B, and the reason why I think they're B, and I know that there are a lot of you who get into lobbies where you'll throw a crack grenade onto a crusher, bulwark, whatever target it is, and it doesn't actually do anything because that target just dies. Because someone else goes in, they get the kill, or you get the kill because you're already using something like a plasma gun, revolver, whatever loadout you're using. And so it just completely nullifies the effectiveness of the crack grenade. Plus the fact that the crack grenade is making you waste extra points to get to where you want to get to just makes it inferior to the shredder. The shredder giving you that just crowd control in a group of crushers, enhancing your gunplay is just infinitely better. I don't know how you can think about it any uh, in any other way. And that is everything you just said is a big part of why crack grenades are fucking... I'll get these C-tier, honestly. And I, the only reason these are getting C-tier is because they do good boss damage. I yep. have never been tempted when doing a World's First or a Solo or a Duo or any kind of challenge you could think of. I have never been tempted to bring crack grenades. I have never had anyone ask me to bring crack grenades. It has never come up. I've never played with another veteran that wanted to use crack grenades in those, like, hardcore scenarios. But... The fact that they do bring, like, 20,000 boss damage can sometimes be useful if you were going to bring them. And yeah, and there I, are ways, I, I honestly, I there are ways to make the damage crazy. Uh, like, if you're running it, surprise attack with infiltrate, uh, focus target, like, you could really make crack grenade damage crazy, but if you're playing with competent players, uh, you're not going to need to. Yeah, you have the plasma gun. You also have the fucking Columbus, yeah. and it's like, okay. Yeah, think about this. The average crack grenade will kill a crusher. If you're lucky, it will kill two crushers. A columnus with onslaught can kill a crusher in like one second or a half a second, depending on crit headshots. You, by the time you throw, it sticks on and it pops. A columnus vet can kill like two to three crushers as is. A plasma gun vet can kill like all five of them in the whole pack. And that's just the biggest problem with crack grenades. Yep. And outside of that, they provide no utility. Also, a huge problem is you can only carry two of them. So that means, that means like, no demo team. Because it has so much anti-synergy with demo stockpile when you can only hold two grenades. No demo team means you're, like, having the amount of grenades you throw in a mailstorm. Which means, okay, I could have thrown 60 grenades that stun and apply a dot. Or... I can throw, like, 10 cracks. And whenever I do play with casuals that are using cracks, it, it because there's only two of them, you have this weird mentality where, let's say you want to always keep one uh, out of your inventory so that you're always rolling demo stockpiles timer. Well, now you only have one to kill crusher packs, which means maybe you only kill, like, one crusher and that's your whole grenade contribution, whereas one frag could have stunned the whole pack. Dude, you know what? they need to do to make crack grenades at least funner what just make them explode on impact make them explode right away make them like the fastball As... from borderlands dude yes that would make them so fun and i i would consider it i would consider taking them smoke grenades these aren't even for fun, bro. These just, like, actively are yeah, a detriment. Yeah, it's not. Also, this shit is bad for casuals, too. Like, yep. Let me talk for the tryhard perspective first. First off, you could not be in a worse position on the skill tree if you tried to. It's be. in Australia. Yeah, yeah. You grab this. Now you got to grab this, 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 this. Okay, so rip one, two, rip two skill points that could have gotten you superiority, could have gotten you iron will, could have gotten you onslaught. Like, rip two skill points, bro. First off, that's already fucking atrocious. And that that alone... Costing two skill points on vet, that's enough to drop anything down by a tier. But then we consider what these fucking things actually do. Like, oh my god. First off, no one can tell you what these actually do. I refuse to believe it. Search Reddit, search YouTube. Motherfuckers, everyone gives you a different explanation. Everyone says they know how they work. 
And I have not, yeah, I've yet to see someone like actually just draw. Maybe that's a fucking video I should make. Just like a 20 minute deep dive in how smoke grenades actually work. Because it's like, I don't see anyone talking about it or showing evidence or anything. I just see people post like one paragraph on Reddit. They're like, yeah, so I dropped it and it made gunners run towards me. Then the top reply is I threw it down and they kept shooting me through the smoke. And it's like, what gives? What did it do? You know, they are inconsistent, which by the way, the higher level you are at video games, something you start to value more than anything else is consistent damage output. And it's like, this shit doesn't help you with damage. It doesn't stun. You got to drop this and hope it makes the AI do what you expect it to do after it's down, which is not consistent, not something you can count on, and not something people want to even think about. It adds more to your mental stack to do something that had you just thrown a shredder and knocked them over also does for you. And deals damage while doing it. So casuals can't even agree on how these work. And they don't do anything even when they are working. The only case I've seen where these are good. And I mean this is the only fucking time I've seen these be used. Is if everyone is just rushing forward. You throw it down. And sometimes it makes gunners not shoot you while you're running out in the open to cover. But oh my god, you have so many better ways to do that. Just throwing a frag at them and running to cover as they're knocked over achieves the same effect, but it'll probably kill some of them. There are also just ways to boost suppression on the vet already. So it actually becomes really easy to suppress gunners, especially if you're using a plasma or something. Um, they'll get suppressed. It'll it'll work if you just shoot at them. Okay, rock. Rock. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta do this. Hold on. Rock. Wait, not enemy. Rock. Rock. Bro, I'm... Fun. What, what do you want me to yes. say, dude? I if, I if I say anything else about The Rock, these motherfuckers will eat me alive. They'll come after you. Just rock. Look. Uh, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say placement on tree. Good. Yes, it's on the left side. It's very good. Ease big, of use. Big, big, fr don't, big friendly rock. You're throwing a rock. Don't to think. Yeah, throwing a rock. Bro, rock. Uh, there is a bit of tech with skill it. Skill to it. Yeah, rock, rock canceling. And tech. Yeah. Um, headshots on things basically kills every special in the game. Rock. Good. Rock. Rock. Good. Rock. Rock. <laughs> rock and stone. Uh, honestly, I've actually seen this used quite a lot for tryhards as well. Purely because this of is, rock. This canceling. is what I've been using in my uh, in my solo attempts. Yeah, this might honestly be A tier. It's good. Like I, it's I don't good. know if I can even say this is B tier. Like rock is fucking good, dude. It it rock. really is just the uh, the placement next to the nodes that it's next to. Rock. And you don't rock. have to think about it. It's it'll get you out of rock. situations. So rock. Rock. It's a rock. Rock. It's a free grenade. A rock. rock, dude. I don't know what else you guys want me to say, bro. It's a fucking stone. It's a stone, Luigi. You didn't make it. Man, I wish I just committed that whole time to only saying rock and random rock references. Okay. Uh, This thing. The box. 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 The box. Yeah. Box. Yeah. That, uh, um, hold on. Rock. Box. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> box. Box is pretty good, if, if I understand correctly. Box is, like, also up here, yeah? So so here's the issue with box. The issue okay. with box is that it fills the same role as, as the shredder rock. frag grenade. Oh, okay. But it doesn't have the same grenade regeneration capabilities as the shredder frag okay, grenade. Okay, you, you convinced me lower, my 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 opinion lowering. But it is an, an ideal spot in the tree technically because it allows you to get something like soften them up, which allows your team to do 15% <laughs> more damage against everything. Uh, but it's still box, not as good as other options. Box. It's just box. It's I think not rock. I see. I'm just, I'm not even going to try to rate this shit for casuals because any <laughs> argument I could make, they're going to say cool argument, but fucking hold this box to the fucking dumb idiot. Casual because... Ogan players have not even made it to this point of the video. They're, uh, uh, dude, they're you're role playing you're in the comments. Right. You're they're role playing right. in the comments you're and we love right. you for it. We love you yeah. guys for it. Any argument I could make about the rock or box that will be responded with like, cool argument. Hold this rock, idiot. Yeah. You know, so I'm not even going to try to rate these. I'm just going to put them in their own tier up there. Rock, box. There you go. This I will actually rate though because the amount of yes. strategies that this, this fucking, the amount, this is S tier. The amount of strategies that this thing has is insane. 
Frag also, bomb. Soften him up. Loyal protector. Also. Amazing. Field improv. Gives you this field fact for improv, free. Yeah. So, I got to talk about something. Three veg. The hardest thing in the game. Guess what? Gives you an extra grenade. Which gives you... It gives you an enhanced blitz. Sorry, let me, let me use the politically correct language here. Enhanced blitz gives Ogren two of these. So, you throw two of these. You grab one off the shelf. Throw two more. Grab your ammo from field improv. Throw two more. You just threw six insta screen clear I win buttons in like 20 seconds. Yeah, that's balanced. Okay. But if you don't have a vet with field improv and you don't have teammates that are cool with you double dipping into the ammo to like just use this shit as a I win, get out of jail free button. Like I can, you could do when the Karnak twins was around. Oh my God. This shit fucking got to shine so, so hard. Yep. Uh, I think for casuals, it's much worse though, because good luck letting your, getting your teammates to feed you grenades. Bro, all it takes is one asshole zealot player to just grab every single grenade before you get there for this to be real, to get really not fun really fast. Yeah, and just imagine if the zealot is running immolation grenade, which is basically yeah. just an inferior version of your grenade. Yeah, that it's, would be infuriating. It is infuriating. Yep. Okay, uh, I'm not talking about the Ogren talents next, dude. I'm all Ogrened out. Uh, okay, Benediction. I mean, it's fucking benediction, dude. This thing's placement on the skill tree kind of carries it. Duelist, until death, which people love. Desperation. See, if you're a great player, you go bang, boom, bam, bop. If you're uh, if you're working on becoming a great player, you go bam, boom, bang. But honestly, either way, dude, no matter what skill level you're at, both of these fucking sides of the tree. Like, we've got a side of the tree for people who are trying to play perfectly and a side of the tree for people who want to have insurance. You can fucking double dip, and it's still worth it because all these nodes are so damn good. And then yep. you get this. Oh, my God. Yep. And it's it's not a bad aura either. It is it is good. It's going to oh, benefit dude. you and the team. 15% less, like, toughness damage for everyone all the time is fucking ridiculous. Like, it's a, it's insane. This is even better than Loner. Even if you were, like, constantly in one coherency, I think this is better than Loner. The only argument you can make is because Loner will enable your coherency toughness regen by yourself. Maybe yep. you value that more. But, dude, two-player coherency regen is, like, two toughness every, like, one and a half seconds. It's garbage. It's nothing. Yeah. I, it's benediction. Uh, I think for casual players... They will not appreciate this at nearly as much. I'd still say it's A because yeah. of the because of the placement on the tree. Because most casual players are gonna take until uh, death yeah. and holy revenant, it's still gonna be A. It's still very good. Yeah, all right. You've you've talked me into it. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna appreciate the actual effectiveness of 15% less toughness damage, though, but yeah. Oh god, this. I have actually oh had a lot of zealot players, and I don't know if they're just from, like, the, the fucking Discord channel and they're trying to troll me and bait me, but I have seen a not insignificant amount of zealots tell me that this is overhated. Now, I think for tryhard play, this is bad. I think for tryhard yeah. play, why are you taking that much corruption damage? And for tryhard yeah. play, you don't need insurance for mistakes, Unless it's a lot of fucking insurance that pays dividends. So I think for tryhards, this is like... Also, it is in the worst fucking place. It's in the worst spot. Look the... at this. This this shit, garbage. If you ever see a build telling you to take this shit, unless it's a revolver build, they are trolling you, dog. You, you can't get any better, I promise you. These nodes, garbage. 40% uptime, trash. Impact strength, who the fuck even knows what impact does? Yep. Reload speed on melee kill, okay. Minus sprint stamina cost? Dude, I get this from a fucking curio. <laughs> you know? Like, dude. When, uh, when you guys are looking at these nodes, don't think about how you can make them work. Think about what think you're about, giving yeah, think, up yeah. by taking yeah. these nodes. Let's say you take one, two, three, Four, just to take this? Bro, what the fuck does Lady Gaga know about cameras? Like, dude, you can't take this. You can't take this. You have to give up some of this shit. Like, yeah. dude, 
<laughs> you know, no thy raft be swift, no cutthroat, no invocation, potentially no enduring faith, you know, no duelist. Like, damn, you got to give up a lot to take this motherfucker. And then you find out that the only thing it does is heal corruption for your current wound, not even like your locked in wounds. Honestly, bro, with the how bad this placement is, this should be able to unlock one wound per game. Yeah, it should it should just be heals corruption, period. Well, like, it, it, I think I think it should be a wound. I think it should be capped. I think it should be like just maybe like two wounds, maybe one or two wounds. If this could if this could unlock two wounds, I'd I'd probably like put it up here. I'd say this is pretty the, decent. But no, the I reason why I disagree is because no, veterans dude, get so a better a better effect. Yeah, in field with improv. field improv, which and you so should always be say, taking. Yeah, no, man. I would just even, say uncap it. Uncap fuck, it. Yeah, dude. Even if you uncap this, this shit would still be garbage. This shit yep. would. still still be trash fuck man even if you buff this like giga buff this bro you know what i'm gonna say it even if this healed all wounds and healed five corruption per second it would still be trash because you gotta spend one two three four skill points to take it then you gotta spend five skill points to get out of it and get a good alt yep. or you're locking yourself dude you're giving up five skill points if you're trying to take this five skill points that do fucking nothing for you this might be the worst note in the entire game bro even for casuals this shit sucks yeah you're just giving up so much to to take it Fuck, man. You got you know when they added Warrior Priest, they just made it so he like just couldn't take corruption damage at all? Hey, why yeah. isn't why yeah, isn't exactly. that what this is? Dude, why isn't that what this is? Straight up, you know what how what I would do? All allies cannot have corruption. Yeah. That would you yeah. you you might hear that and go like, dude, that sounds really strong. Bro, giving up five skill points on do nothing skills to get there, fuck man. I, it's got to be, like, game-changingly strong. Or if they made it so that, you know how it says heal 1.5 corruption from the current wound, blah, 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 blah. If that actually gave you health back as well for yeah. getting corrupted, that might make it really valuable, too. But, man, this is this is garbage. What? Uh, the, oh, yeah, loner. Loner, yep. So, loner, loner for tryhards, if is... you are... If <laughs> you're solo... Bad. I, dude, if you're solo, I though, I think I know. I think it's bad in solo. I think it's really? bad in solo, dude, 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 dude. What does two coherency give you in solo? Less Natural? dogs, less Nat netters. Who gives a fuck? You shitty <laughs> just player? deal with it. Yeah, deal with it. True, and real. I think loner sucks. I think the only positive it gives you is it enables over time natural uh, toughness regen. I think outside of that, dude, I don't even think loner should be in the game. You know, you know what? Die wrath be scorned. Fuck you. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Shouldn't be in the game. I think everything about this note is just bad, shitty and toxic. It is placed terribly. You yeah. might want Thyraph be swift, but outside of that, you don't want this. You don't want any of this garbage. You don't want this effect because the effect isn't that strong. And do we even want to promote this kind of fucking shit to people? Like, do we no, want? No, you do, don't. You do don't. we want to promote this to like the average Guilo? You I don't want think to be do. working with your team. Like on the casual list, the loner should be just shadow banned. Yeah, Get seriously. Like, dude. Like, you know what? We're going to change this. I don't really think there's anything that's strictly for fun for casuals because I think nothing is that bad and this game's not that hard. Fuck you. Die, 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 die. You should kill yourself. Yourself. Now! Dolphin sound. <laughs> yeah, dolphin sound. I think this is where loner belongs for casuals. 
And uh, it's got to be it's got to be changed, or they're just going to replace the uh, the entire aura entirely. And I think based on what I've read on Reddit, I think you guys would agree with me on this, uh, because the kind of zealot that wants loner probably isn't very good at the game, if we're being honest. Because yeah, like Jeff said, people love to pull out the um actually it less dogs and netters, bro. Mm -hmm. What the fuck do you know about stopping a dog or a netter? Just shoot him in the fucking head. Like, I don't have a problem with that shit. I haven't gotten dogged or netted in like a hundred hours. Like, what the fuck does a loner zealot know about killing a, a, a disabler? You know? Like, dude, why do you even want that effect? Bring it, bring it on. Bring it on! Like, yeah, come on, make it harder. Give me more shit to kill. Fuck this. Uh, these are the veteran ones, I think. This, yep. yeah, so this you're, is... you're getting into the veteran auras, yeah. Hold on, sorry. Some of these, it's, it's starting to blend together. I've been talking about Dark Tide for like an hour straight. As counting the, 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 the failed takes, one of these belongs with the veteran. I just forget which one. Bullets, it's going to be guy... survivalist. Bullets. Yeah, okay. I knew yeah. something was fucking me up. I was, I was new. I was like something, 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 something's not right. Something's not right here. Okay, this... Bro, this is just bad. This isn't even for fun. This is 5% damage in a, like, okay place. You know, like, it's, it's okay, I guess it's in the best place. It's better than survivalist. But yeah, listen to me, I guess it's in the best place. Oh, okay, you know, as I, if... I think the, the issue is the, uh, the passives is above it. The passes oh, above fuck, it don't do right. anything. Covering Never mind. fire is Never mind. not this is good. Garbage. This is garbage, yeah. Um, grenade tank here doesn't give you as much value as you think it does. Health boost. Crack grenade? Oh my go oh my goodness yep. gracious, bro. And no matter how you spin it, five percent damage for the entire team nothing. compared nothing. to getting ammo is nothing. Yeah. It's not it doesn't help you reach a single breakpoint. There's not a single breakpoint in this video game where this actually matters. So even for casuals, this is D tier. This is literally pick this to have no aura. Yeah. What fire team would need to be would be like plus twenty percent damage to monsters for you and all allies and coherence here or something that at least makes something, it something massive this is bad the effect is much better than fire team but 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 it was placement is the positioning yeah. bro this sucks this can't this has synergy but it's kind of gimmick build synergy who the fuck wants a smoke grenade and most people are not going infiltrate. They're going voice. So, you know, like, ah, oh, dude. And 5% is not a lot. Make it 10%. Even for... This, this needs to... What this needs to do is it also needs to increase your dodge distance. So that yeah. it can make a lot of weapons viable. Like the power sword with a oh my closing God. Yeah, kill that, nice. that increase your dodge distance would be amazing. Oh, yeah. Uh, survivalist. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Yeah, wait, wait. it's just... Hold yep. on, hold on. Wait, slash has been nerfed. Hold on. Has slash been nerfed, yeah. Has been nerfed hard. Um, survivalist, even after the nerf, this shit is still overpowered. It's so good. It's, it's got so good. it's got like good enough placement. Like catch your breath is okay. Get back in the fight. When it's good is like game saving good. It's by shredder. So like it's positioned fine. The effect is borderline overpowered. And it's just like, damn, dude. And you know what? For casuals, this is another still super good. Because yeah. you 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 have to think. You think less, shoot more. Sounds good to me, bro. Yeah, more ammo for the team in an environment where people generally are pretty ammo starved. Uh, notice that in a lot of casual games. So it's just good. Okay, we need to talk about uh, Psyker now. Okay. Seer's presence is mm, is it broken? No, I think it's just S tier. It's not broken. If it was Psychonetics Aura, this is S tier for both. No, actually, yeah. this is. I think this is worse for casuals because casuals don't press their alt. As much as I hate to say it, power wise, even if you're yeah, a casual, this is up here. But if you're playing with four players that have like forty hours, bro, they are not thinking about optimal ultimate uptime usage. They're just like, bro, did you see that dog that just went flying and glitched out? What the fuck? This game is crazy. So, uh, yeah. 
So, right. Placement-wise, this shit is god tier. You can grab these nodes, you can grab fucking the best node in the game, and then you can branch out into Venting Shriek or Scryers. So this is, yep. like, the best placement possible. This has one of the strongest effects of an aura. CDR, bro, hey, hey, remember Vermintide 2? There was a time after, like, two years after the game came out when we realized cooldown reduction was insane, and we put cooldown reduction on all trinkets and all tryhards. Like, virtually every trinket for every fucking, like, Onslaught series tournament, everyone was using CDR all the time for everything. Yeah. There's people yep. who try to tell you that CDR is, like, not worth using in Darktide. Uh, there's also people who get locked up in insane asylums for being crazy. And I imagine the overlap between those two groups is rather high. So, uh, 10% more of these when you're already dropping, like, 30 of them per game. Oh, you know, just three more of these. You know, three more Scryer's Gaze. Like, 10 more stealths. Nah, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's not going to help at all. For casuals, yeah. though, if you're not thinking ABCs of video games always be casting, if you're not thinking that, then you're not actually using your ult. You're not actually benefiting from this. Uh, I forget what the next one is called because this is oh, the no. oh, kinetic no. presence. Yeah, this shit oh, is bad. Boy. This shit it's is bad. this shit is garbage. It's the same problem as fire team. Seven point yeah. five damage only to elites. Who the fuck even knows what seven point five non scalable damage adds in terms of breakpoints? And when it comes to its placement on the tree, like the only reason why a psyker might be thinking Boom, about bam, taking bop, kinetic bang. presence is for unlucky for some, the very far bro. left node that allows you to just Nah, bro, this sucks. <laughs> nah, bro, bro, shut up. Shut it up, doesn't shut up, shut it up. doesn't do anything. You would shut never up. take this. Shut up. Shut up. You're trolling. Yeah. He's actually trolling. He's he's jostling your joystick. Yeah, I mean it's just bad for the same reasons fire it's team bad. is bad. Yep. This is bad because of placement but i think yep. it is better for casuals because for casuals five percent crit chance is really nice but man this shit kind of sucks it's a lot better now but it's still not that great like it's usable this shit is kind of bad we all know about a sale and then like you know I think one of the issues is that you already get enough crit with Scryer's Gaze. Yeah, if you're so, going Scryer's Gaze, like, a sale, Prescience, Scryer's Gaze, fucking sucks. Please don't do this. The The, the, the problem is this, this shit. Why yeah, Psychonetics Aura. Hedge, please, come back so I can DM you and tell you to take this shit out of the game. Please. Like, bro, please come back. I have been bitching to you about this for, like, ever. Like, Bro, yep. decrease cooldown for every elite or specialist kill for 5%. This is one, this is an S plus tier curio roll uh, applied to four players every time any of those four players kills one guy. So if you kill three enemies, if anyone on your team kills three enemies, that is like adding an extra curio for four players. After you kill like Two, three hundred elites or specials, you fucking added like 90 curios worth of value extra. This would be the same as equipping like 90 fucking curios. Like, that's crazy. When you put it like that, it's like, goddamn. And this locks you out of that. Exactly. I think that Psychonetics Aura should just Dude, be honestly, Seer's presence. Honestly, we're just straight up moving this to D tier for tryhards because no one who's tryharding would ever take this because they would They're never give up. It. They would never give up Psychonetics yeah. Aura. Exactly. Okay, I guess now you have to talk about the big man, huh? Dude, I don't even know. Big what the, boy. I don't even know what the names of this shit does. <laughs> None of these are good, unfortunately. Yeah, that's. I do know that. I know they're always bitching about it. I don't know what the actual names are. Bonebreakers Aura, Stay Close, and Coward Calling. Aren't these, like, all bad except for this one, which is, like, okay because it's 20% damage to enemies that are suppressed? Hold on. Is Correct. this one damage or is this one suppressed? Yeah, it's damage. Okay, cool. It's damage, yeah. Yeah, and it's pretty easy to suppress, and suppression is pretty good. So, like, it's yep. okay. But, man, 20% is not a lot, and it only can activate on other gunners. Which Another are issue is the uh, the placement on the tree is you're is, not really going to be yeah. running into it when you're taking yeah, you the don't. other options. You don't. If you're going to take this... 
or like this, you really don't want to be out here in no man's land. Yeah. I don't even know where to place this for casuals, dude. You tell me. I'm throwing darts at a board here. Uh, I would place it in basically the same tier as Point Blank Barrage. So with your typical gun ogre and builds, because you are going to get a lot of use out of it if you're getting fed ammo or if you're just taking all the ammo. Dude, on for your a team. second, I was like, what the fuck is Point Blank Barrage? And then I realized. <laughs> Again, do not take my Ogren opinion seriously. I am not allowed to have valid opinions on this class. This shit is the toughness on 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 what again? <laughs> it's just toughness for punishment. So oh. stay close. It's just a flat 25% toughness oh, this for punishment. Is not good. The issue with toughness for punishment, guys, if you don't know, is it's, that it's toughness for, coherency, for punishment. It? It's just for coherency. It's not and that's for anything a, and else. That's a, and that's a flat number. So it's like Correct. Yeah, bro, this sucks. It's, I don't even know where to put this. It's really this is low value. If if you guys are stuck, uh, stacking toughness replenishment on your curios, like you really need to reevaluate that. I'm throwing it in C tier because this shit is garbage. This is the heavy attack. Yeah. This is chart like heavy attack damage, right? It's it's heavy attack melee damage, ten percent for the entire team. One thing that's great about bone breakers is the position. Okay, in the yeah, tree. hold on, it's hold on. Right this, next this, to... this this gets A tier for for both. And yeah. this, this, okay, there are genuinely, there are specific breakpoints. This is going to sound fucking crazy. There are breakpoints for the dueling sword and the knife that can only be met with this aura. If you have this aura, there are, you will, I have a knife in my inventory that is specifically for if I'm playing with an Ogren and they're using this aura. Yeah, we're talking that level of tryhard, by the way. Because you can meet new breakpoints. And I do know that. And again, that's the problem with this shit. 5% is not enough. 10% is. You know, 7.5% is not enough. 10% is. Yep. Okay. All right. Let's talk this. I am about... Ooh, the important stuff. I'm about to, uh, I'm about to shock people. As time I can see that. As time has gone on... This node has gotten worse. It is, is it, it is aging like milk. Less and less people are taking it. More and more people are realizing momentum is just better. It is, it is statistically, on average, DPS-wise, if you go in the Cycanium right now, make the exact same build, but take this keystone, make the exact same build, but take this keystone, you will, like 90% of the time, always do at least 10 to 15% more DPS with this node than this node. And since the only fucking thing these nodes do is augment how much damage you output, they just do it in different ways. Whichever one gives you more of that damage is just the better node. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, this shit has always, in my own testing, in everyone else's testing, always been on average more DPS. Although I do think this is good for casuals. Like this is real good for casuals because you don't it's have to, good, you don't yeah. have to think. It's just a bunch of damage. You just throw it on. You're critting all the time. You don't have to think. You don't have to worry. You don't care about doing 10% more DPS. You don't give a fuck, so you, you just click in buttons. No. Yep. And it'll it'll enable a couple of different newer options like for example, the recon last gun with blazing piety is pretty fun. It is a really good time. And it enables Invocation of Death and Fury of the Faithful more. But yeah, if you are going try hard, you want to be running Shroudfield and momentum. Inexorable Judgment, man. Just call inexorable it Momentum, judgment. bro. Call it call Momentum. It, call it Momentum, dude. That's what everyone calls it. Okay, uh, Marty momentum. Dom. Marty Dam. This shit oh, is boy. ass. It is, it is unique enough that if you're going to try hard with, like, you're going to try hard Marty Dom specifically... It is its own thing. It is its own play style. So there are people who like that play style. So it's that's the red that, tear stone ring. Yes. Yeah, so, no, it's not the red tear stone ring. Shut the fuck up. It, 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 <laughs> it's not. That is blasphemy, bro. Saying that. <laughs> so uh, this is a valid play style. Unfortunately for all of us, it is just like loud and obnoxious people like me that we all just kind of have to deal with, you know. So, you know, that's a thing. I think for casual players, this sucks because it just encourages the worst kind of play style for bad players. Sit at low HP to do moderately more damage. Okay, well, buddy, you're you're a Timmy who plays for like an hour a week with 20 hours. If you try to sit at 50 HP, you're going to die really fast. Yeah. 
This this is the same problem as loner. It enables bad play styles. Honestly, dude, I'm gonna put this down for fucking shouldn't be in the game. But like it just needs a rework. Like just make it work. Bro, make toughness work like temp HP or something if you have this. Like the problem is this isn't Vermintide. In Vermintide, Correct. this was really, really good because of temp HP. Because of toughness bleed through, if you sit on one point of HP, you can fucking die in two hits for the anything. It just makes the game harder for no fucking gain. And it's just like, you know, it just needs a rework. That's all it needs. It just, it just needs something that makes like, no, I got it. You know what this needs? You know what this needs? Holy fuck. I, I got it. I got it. This needs to be way longer. Like this needs to be like, you know. Like, this needs to be, like, this level of long, like, on the text. Like, it needs to have multiple paragraphs. Yeah, exactly like this. And the first paragraph just needs to be, like, you know, it needs to do something with the wounds instead of just making them give you a slight damage and attack speed bonus. It needs to give you some kind of defense. It needs to be, like, you know, if you... I think, if I think you, all it needs to say, dude, is... It's like, if you go down, like, let's say you die uncap one of your wounds and reset your health to that point for each wound that you yeah. have. It does it once per wound. No, or you know what else it could say? Having one wound... Th 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 dude, here's another way to fix this. Add another node right here that says having one wound gives the full effect. They They need to have a node where whenever you have one of the passive buffs from Shroud Field from Fear of the Faithful or from Chorus, your health can't be reduced below one for the duration of that buff. Basically yeah, yeah. making it exactly like Vermintide. <laughs> yeah, just some the, uh, kind of... Zealot. Some kind of skill-based thing that allows Zealot to not just randomly get shot by a gunner on fucking Timbuk2, then get hit once from his side because the backstab sound didn't play, and then he just falls over and is dead for the next minute. Like, it's just... And even then... 8% damage is just not that much. I'm sorry. It's just not. Scryer's Gaze gives you more. Not all at once, but over multiple hits. Yeah. You're also giving up your Curios for wounds. So you're giving up like stamina and a lot of other valuable things. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. Yoink. I don't think it's broken. Yep. I don't think it's overpowered and I don't think it should be nerfed, but I think it's super strong. Yoink. I think it's S tier for casuals yep. as well. Because... Yep, yep, yep. All you do is fucking move around, dodge attacks. Now all of your hits on your guns and your melee, like everything, does more damage and attacks quicker. There's also tech with yeah. this, with like the flamer, where like you can quickly pull out the flamer. Or no, I'm sorry, that I'm thinking Fury of the Faithful. There's tech with this where you can like pull the flamer out and then like use it and insta like get one crit stack that like applies like five stacks or something like that. But that's the other thing. This shit increases the damage of each stack, which stacks with the stacks. So they're all getting bonus stacks and applying much faster, which costs less ammo. So this has mm -hmm. this has god tier synergy with the flamer. This has god tier synergy with the flamer. This has god tier synergy with the knife. This has god tier synergy with the knife. So it all just kind of comes together to make one monster of a build. Yep. And then for the uh, the casual players, it's getting you more toughness regeneration or I guess replenishment. Uh, it's just much more safe of an option to pick yeah that's the other thing this right here two percent per stack 15 stacks 30 percent two times 15 you're getting 30 percent every fucking six every seconds six seconds on yeah. top of the shroud field 40 percent every like six seconds because you're pressing this mm -hmm. shit on cooldown on top of that damage reduction which stacks with this damage reduction and it stacks like additively with this shit so you're getting like you know, you're getting like 65, 70% damage reduction almost from this yeah. on top of this. So it's like, boom, every time you use stealth, which is like every five to 10 seconds, 40% toughness. Every six seconds, 30% toughness. So every like 10 seconds, you're regenerating like 70% toughness. That toughness has like 60 plus percent damage reduction, which also works with this. It's like you get this, you get this, you get this, you get 70% back every couple seconds. Dude. The, you, the whole 
bottom right corner of the zealot tree is just so sexy. Pious cutthroat, swift certainty. Yeah, that's the other thing. Momentum, it's right above this. Like, like, oh, god man. damn. All right, let's do uh, let's do Psyker next. Space wizard. This shit is strictly for fun. <laughs> yep, strictly for fun. For yep. if you're a tryhard, there is no reason to ever take this over like. Over warp if you're if you're using DD. a staff, you're going to be taking warp siphon. If you're going to be a gun psyker, you're going to be taking disturb destiny. Yeah, and that's really all there is to say about it. It doesn't provide yeah. enough value. It doesn't do enough to compensate for not taking the other two. For casuals, though, I think it is much smite, better. dude. Smite. I, I with genuinely this think fucking like, keystone. I think it might honestly be like up here because. Casual psychers, they love a sale. They love smite. Yep. This makes both of them significantly better. See, I mean, it really did. This is this is like a prime example of the difference between like good tryhard players and casual lesser skilled players. If you don't care about your effectiveness and you're just trying to have fun and you just care about good enough, then like, bro, you just throw this on, you throw this on, and you just play the game, bro. You don't think, you don't do anything. You just try to play as best as you can, and you throw out your little buddies, and it just it just works, and you just win, and you contribute, and you have a good time. Yep, exactly. And like, yeah, with Smite, you know, by the way, can I just, can I just, I just, I have to like stroke myself for a second here. I called it that Smite was like garbage, even for damage for casuals. Then that patch rolled around where they gave Smite like 100% extra damage, like on top of this already. So I was once, I was so fucking right. Fat Shark looked at the numbers themselves and were like, yeah, it's actually okay for us to just board double the damage Smite's already doing. On top of this node doubling it. So we had Smite's old base damage, then this to double it. Now we have Smite's old base damage, plus the 100% increase, plus this like 100% increase. Smite is doing like four times the damage it used to be doing. And I think it's still not that good for damage. I told you motherfuckers. I said you could double its damage and it still wouldn't be used. It just makes it better for casuals. Anyway. Uh, Disrupt Destiny. Is very fun, very good. This shit, I can't believe they buffed this. The yeah. fact that, like, I, I, Fat Shark, what are you thinking? They buffed this and they buffed the fuck out of this. Yeah. They I think made, they were trying to make the gun psyker more accessible. Like, yeah, like to approachable casual players. But dude, you you've yeah. got you've got people like me that have like 500 hours, like level 2000 psychers over here. And we've played nothing but Gun Psyker, and then you drop those buffs, and now Gun Psyker is the best build in the entire game, and nothing else even holds a candle to it. It's one good. one good Gun Psyker makes it so that the game becomes like unplayable for other players. I don't even know where to begin with this. Like it gives like four different forms of damage. Like it gives flat damage, critical damage, weak spot damage. Like, and each of those damage, one percent damage makes your base damage higher. Which then you deal that damage, the critical modifier happens to it, and that critical modifier is now increased from that base damage, which then the weak spot modifier goes on it, which is now increased from that critical and base damage. So you're like quadruple dipping on damage. It, it yeah, gives you every kill is giving you toughness and movement speed, which stacks with this toughness and movement speed, and it's just it comes together to like give you like six, seven times damage. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, and Tanner and I are kind of on the same wavelength, so I think that when we get to focus target, um, we're going to briefly talk about this, but Disrupt Destiny with something like a focus target vet on your team oh my God. is ridiculous. Oh, it's ridiculous. It, it, it's literally game-breaking. It is the same as just, like, closing the door on the boss and instantly killing them. It is that level of fucked yeah. up. Now, I do think for casuals, if you had asked me this question before the rework, I'd, I would put this shit, like, down here. But... After the rework, this motherfucker's it's going in very tier. approachable. This, no, it's honestly, so dude, this motherfucker's going in broken. You guys broke this shit. The fact that it goes yeah. down like stack by stack now and not all at once, and like you tag someone and like get the credit, like oh my god, <laughs> like dude, you just throw this, it on. This is this is something you could run with the sale now, um, and with 
Scryer's Gaze. And like you said, really just unlock that fucking high risk, high reward Gamba play style. Dude, even if you don't want to do that with gambling, even if you stick to staffs and you only do this, bro, like if you can hit criticals and weak spots, if your build allows for like consistently hitting both of those, there's no reason to pick anything else, I feel like. Unless you're oh, doing like or... unless you're doing like the trauma blaze kind of setup with this. Like outside of that, this is fucking overpowered, man. If you're using a uh, if you're using a macro in order to basically cancel animation cancel for staff light attacks. Oh <laughs> my god! Destiny. With the new surge <laughs> thing that applies to the primary. Yeah. Oh my yep, god! Yeah. Yep, yep. Dude, like that in its own is arguably a meta build. I kind of want to make a video about the new like trauma staff. Just let just left click, little bro. She's busy, yeah. little bro. I'm fingering her pussy with these staff left click uh things. Like she's busy, <laughs> little bro. Like that build is you could teach a fucking dog. No, you could teach a dog with brain damage to play that build. And then warp Amazing. siphon, S tier. Warp yeah, Siphon for tryhards, really good. And for casuals, S tier. It's a do nothing. You throw it on and it just works and, the, and it does everything. It literally does everything. I'm not joking. It does literally yep. everything. Uh, spending it gives you your combat ability back. You get less peril. Although this is, by the way, this is like really bad for casuals or, or tryhards. You either want like peril resistance on your staff or inner tranquility. A lot of people will take inner tranquility and then try to get like a fucking one percent warp resistant staff, that is like the the ultra peak of tryhard psyker. But uh, you know, you get toughness back, you get your ability back faster, you get more damage, you get fucking soul blaze. Enable like, soul blaze. I know yeah. it's like, dude, literally every single thing you're doing, this is rewarding you for it, and then some. This is a this is kind of the perfect keystone. Yeah, my, no, I think fat, you're right. Fat Shark I, was cooking with this one. I literally think this is the perfect skill tr the skill node. This is perfect. Yeah. It, it was perfect down to the last minute detail. It was everything about this node is perfect. Yeah, I mean it's it's not too strong. It's not too weak. It's a good mm -hmm. complement to every single build. Yeah, I I just there you go. It's literally perfect. You want an example of a perfect skill node? There you go. Oh boy, now yeah. we get to talk veteran. Ugh. Don't break I, up with me over weapon specialist, please. I think weapon specialist. I think this is ass. <laughs> I think weapon <laughs> specialist isn't that good. <laughs> I think it's like the uh, you know. the main problem that I think vets face is that focus target is so good in. A high skill environment oh, and on. marksman's focus yeah, is yeah. so on, good in a high skill environment. I just they kind of just put uh look, I okay, let me take it back. I don't think this is ass. Like if I had to rate this in a vacuum, I'd put it like here. But like there's no reason to use it. Also, a big yeah. problem that this thing has is it's got so many like tag along nodes. Like you kind of if you're gonna use this, you kind of want this. Like, this is kind of the whole reason mm -hmm. you're bringing this. And yep. then you kind of want this, and you need that to get this. And, you know, like, uh, like you know, so, whereas you can just take Marksman's Focus as is with the Columnus, and it just works. Yeah. I don't see a reason. If you were going to try to min-max Veteran to its absolute peak, I don't see a reason to ever use this. I know it enables builds, and I know it's fun to play with. Like, Kill something, swap the shotgun, get your ammo back, like swap that. It's like makes for like a good yeah. Doom Slayer kind of thing. The uh, it, it actually really enables Deadshot sword. when you're using it with Invigorated yeah, because true, you can just true. kill a, a Pox Walker, boom, 20% stam, your stack and stam. Yeah, see, that's that's, curios, that's, like, that's what I big mean. Big brain like, shit. Like, it's not um, bad. But that's that's for the casual list, though. On the casual list, I would say that it's, it's S tier. S tier. For sure. I was thinking A tier. I just don't think it's impactful enough. But S -tier. oh man, I mean, it's it's gonna make a lot of veterans have a lot of fun and be super impactful with like power swords. Uh, really, just make the mobility on the dueling sword and the knife pretty much just like next level. Like, doesn't belong in Dark Tide kind of mobility. Dude, the knife with I will say the knife with this node, you can like actually fucking dodge yourself off of cliffs that you weren't even next to like i've I, i've done that before like weapon swap vet with a knife and i'll dodge with the knife out 
and I'll like go fucking flying, like especially on the it's mini a, factorum it's map. I'll yeah. kill myself. It's like, dude, whoa. Dude, I use it to I use it to cut across the map, but uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I I pretty much agree on the uh, the tryhard stuff. Like the other keystones are just nuts. Okay, They're marksman's crazy. focus. Boom. Uh, for casuals that aren't trying to like metagame it, D. I think, I think yep. it's terrible. I think I think if you are the casual Guilo, you read this node, you think sniper. You think, oh, I'm gonna snipe, blah 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 blah. No, dude, that shit, it, it will get you killed. It is not a valid playstyle. So for casuals who are trying to like RP this, bad. However, if you're trying to metagame, oh my god. <laughs> Ranged weak spot kills grant three stacks. You uh, getting a kill lets you move for six seconds. You know, you can move for like like nine seconds or whatever without um, losing stacks or whatever. So you get a kill, you move for six seconds, get a kill, move for six seconds. No, bro. No, 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 no. You pull that motherfucking infantry auto gun off the damn rack. You walk out there. And you spray into that crowd for the motherfucking emperor, and you watch as this never has downtime. This will be at 10 stacks for 100% of the engagements, and it will give that columnist like 75% finesse damage, which basically makes the average headshot crit go from like 200 damage to like 450 damage. So you watch as this node single handedly makes your columnist do like double damage almost. It is wild or not double it's more like you know you go from like 200 like 220 or 230 to like 350 but it is it is like one of the largest damage bumps you're gonna get from a single node and considering you always want superiority complex it's only one point away and you don't need any of this stuff like this shit is nice but you don't ever ever need it you know like this i will say this is really nice kills restore stamina which my god that has synergy with this but also yeah. toughness like this just makes it so when you mow down the horde with the columnus you get like half your toughness back hello sacking with iron will mm -hmm. but yeah this is only good with machine guns and it's only good if you have good aim with machine guns if you're one of those people one of those crybaby little bitches that is like the columnus is gun but i could never hit anything with it you my brother you need the aim labs Okay, this is the big one. The big I, one, dude. I think for casuals, this shit is overpowered. This will carry games, yeah. And I think for tryhards, I don't think it's overpowered, but I think it is... Whew. It's good. I, I think it is strong. So there's a... You could tell someone's veteran, like, expertise, their opinion on this note. There's a lot of literal, like, chuds that don't like this note. And I think you're a chud if you don't like this node. Because even if you just dip one point into it, what are you getting? You're getting four times five. You're getting 16% damage. Or no, you're getting 20% 20 20 damage. Even. I'm sorry. Sorry. I, <laughs> I did four times four in my head. I'm stupid. Sorry. We've been recording this for hours now. Um, so this is 20% damage. And it's like always available. You click the button, you make that thing die 20% faster. Everything everyone does deals 20% more damage. And then you have some of the best keystone modifiers. Yep, yep, and we're getting out so, there. Right they're here. so good. 1.5 damage for each stack of focus target. Okay, so this has 100% uptime is what you're telling me. And if you go to 8 stacks, you know, 8 times 1.5, you're talking like 12%, 12%, you know? And it's like, okay, so 12% damage to everyone all the time that stacks with this 20%, just FYI. So you get 12% damage plus 20%, 32% damage. Like, fuck, that's a lot of damage. And then this, replenish five toughness and stamina for each stack for five players. For everyone. Or for four yeah. players. So you have eight stacks. You kill one motherfucking guy, and everyone just got, like, 40% toughness back. 40% toughness across four players. 160% total toughness regeneration. Oh, yeah. 
And you can do that like every seven seconds, by the way. How the fuck can you look at that and say it's bad? Like you, yeah. you got to have brain damage or something. And uh, and we've been forgetting to talk about uh, tree placement for the veteran tree, but it's kind of self-explanatory because well, yeah, I think a lot valuable. of these nodes around these keystones are really valuable. Yeah, They're all superiority really good. is good. Demo team and iron will are really good. Bring it down is really good boss damage. This yeah. node is fucking trash. Don't ever use this node ever. I don't care what anyone says. Running strikes doesn't exist. Yeah. Competitive urge is shockingly strong. Like people massively underrate this. This is another thing. You take this 20% base damage, 32% damage right here. Just by taking yep. this and this, you know, you this, this and this alone is 40% damage for you. This, this, this is like fucking. 30% or I'm sorry, 50% damage for you. And it's like, oh my God, that is so much. Yeah. I think it's time to talk about the big man. All right, big boys. Okay, from my understanding, this one is like a crutch. This one is the best, and this one is kind of bad. That's that's my understanding. You can tell me what so, you think. Uh, let's start with the, the casual list, uh, as always, with the, uh, the ogre okay. here. Uh, sorry, big boys. Um, so with burst limiter override, the cooldown reduction that it provides for point blank barrage. Oh fuck, I forgot. Is this phenomenal. Game I thought this was just yeah. No, no, it doesn't. Oh, you're talking about the modifier. Two hundred percent ability you're bullet reduction. Right. Two you're seconds right. when lucky bullet triggers. When you're yeah. using that with the stubbers, is so good. Uh, whenever you see an ogre and have ridiculous damage in a maelstrom, it's because they're using point blank barrage with. Burst limiter override and maximum firepower. And they're just lighting everything on fire with light them up. So mm -hmm. it's it's really good in casual play. I don't think it's gonna be better than a lot of the other things that we have up here on the list. Probably a A tier or top of B tier. Oh yeah, we'll 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 rank this stuff in the tiers uh afterwards. So we'll mm -hmm. place it A tier for now. I I I I have not seen someone use this in like try hardy play. You you honest. don't. You don't. I, I like, I, I, dude, I like, I, you guys know that one meme from the guy from Pulp Fiction where he's like, you know, with his arm? I don't have a webcam on right now, so you can't see this. But the guy, like Jesse Ventura or whatever, where he's like, huh? Like, where, where is everything? I have never seen an Ogren use this. So I think it's D tier. It doesn't sound particularly good for like min max purposes, partly because these two just kind of seem better. And uh, and then these other two. What the fuck does this one even do again? This is this is the baby mode node. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay, it is. It is. Yep. This is the node where you take this shit and you like never die. I'm putting this in fucking broken for casuals, dude. You the, just... uh, one of the things that makes it broken for casuals is the paint outburst node, where yeah, a lot of right. a lot isn't of casual like Ogun players dogs are a problem. This takes care of dogs because it basically makes it so that whenever you're Feel no pain stacks for now. It will push the dog off you if you get dogged. But at a higher level, you this, shouldn't this be getting sucks. dogged. This shit you sucks. I, I, yeah. No, I'll put it in C tier because if you were going to use it, I actually understand why. Especially if you're like newer to the duo scene. But every yeah. Ogren that I've duoed with has used this. This They've either used yeah, this or no either. Keystone at all. This one's the heavy attack one. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah this, heavy this, attack this, this damage. One, this one very is, simple. This one yep. is okay. Like, I don't know. Do I give it best Ogren award? No. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of not that impactful. It's a B. Keystone. Like, it's like, it's kind of like. I, I think that the, uh, they need to take a look at the Ogren keystones and give, it give the them some team. of that design that something like Warp Siphon has. I would say this is like S tier for casuals, though, because you just click and get, get stuff. Yeah, it's it's set and forget. Um, you get more attack speed with one of the supporting nodes. Like, definitely very good in that environment. But yeah, in a, in a try-hard context, um, mm -hmm. these need to get reviewed. Okay, let's uh, let's actually organize within the tiers now. Okay, so what is the best thing that's strictly for fun? It's got to be this. And then it's got to be a sale. Then it's got to be probably this as a play style. Yeah. And then probably bubble and then immolation grenade. Okay, so yeah, what, is, yeah. what, is, what is the best thing in here for like super 
min max potential. Probably lucky bullet, honestly. Probably lucky bullet, yeah. Uh, Smite has the least potential. The crit chance, the placement is too bad. This doesn't reach any break points. I think these are on the same. No, this is the worst, actually. This is this is just as bad as Smite. I think this... Th nah, dude, oh, fuck, man. This is hard. This shit is bad. For, for D tier, it doesn't matter too much. It's really those top three spots there. I think that you can... I think this is fine, honestly, because you can yeah, actually use yep. these. Like, this is usable. Okay. For C tier, this has got to be the best thing here. Yeah, for sure. Mm, cracker followed nades. by Followed by, honestly, probably the other Keystone. Yeah. Yep. It's hard to compare a grenade to a keystone. And then crack grenades. Yeah. All right. B tier. That's the best thing here. Probably executioner, executioner stance. stance. Then probably this. Then this. Yep. 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 That's perfect. Box is probably the worst thing here. Get your get your heavy hitter up there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I like that. Uh, a tier. Mm, probably stealth. Followed mm -hmm. by this. I think this is the worst thing up here. I think Rock is number three because Rock. Really? You think Rock yeah. is that good? Damn. Okay. Yeah. Um, this looks kind of fine to me. And then for the S tier, ooh, this is gonna be hard. This uh, is tough. I think it. I venting shriek is so close to being legitimately broken, so I think this is fine. I think momentum is also the next thing on here that's the closest thing to be. I think this actually. This is this, so tough. Mm, to me, Dude, a lot this, of these keystones... This shit, is, this shit is like trying to make a top three in Street Fighter VI, bro. It's so difficult. Yeah, a lot of these keystones are so I think so these are three-way tie. I think this is a three-way tie for second place. Yes. Um, I would say move the Ogren to the end of S tier because Ogren... Sorry, Ogren players. Dude, no offense I, to you. Mm, I think Seer's presence is... No, nah, I think Warp Siphon is better because it gives you more, a, like way more cooldown for an individual person. I think it's better than oh, Benediction yeah. as well. Damn. Fuck. For serious presence and benediction, it really is just the placement on the tree. That's what kind of makes them such alluring nodes. Yeah, I kind of uh, feel you like could, I kind of I kind of you like, can make I, the same argument for the ogre grenade and the ogre ability though. They're all neck to neck, dude. Like yeah, dude, this is fucking tight. S tier, it, they're just good. What is the most broken thing in the game? It's it's gotta be Scryer's gaze. I I think it's Scryer's gaze. Right if now. if you if you are trying to min max, it is Scryer's gaze. It is. This thing has so much min max try hard potential that it is it is god tier. It is And I think I think a close second place is Voice of Command. I think Voice of Command is still ever since it's it was introduced, it is and just And you know what? And you nuts. know what? I think you're right. Honestly, I think yeah. these three belong in God tier. I'm not gonna lie. Yes. Yes. Yep. I, I think I think these are legitimately game warping. Uh, every single optimized comp is gun psyker, plasma or columnus vet, and stealth flamer knife throwing knife zealot there you go and then like you either double up on one of those probably the another, veteran like another, another veteran, veteran or yeah. zealot or you bring another or you bring an ogren because you know people love ogren and it's not like he's you know it's not like he's unplayable like super min max ogrens will put out a lot of damage so yeah spam okay. that rumbler man so is stroudfield better than voice I kind of don't think it is because voice affects no. four people. I think mm, I don't know. Voice man. of command I, is, they... is going to be better in a in a team environment. Yeah, and when you bring so two voices they're... of command. Oh, dude, oh, two. Vo okay, you know what? When you bring Hold two. On. Two voices of command would be like up here. I think that's the most broken thing in the game. Two yeah. voices because unlike these two nodes, these two nodes, this node is okay if you stack it with more than one person. This node sucks if you stack it with more than one person. Mm -hmm. This shit. It is impossible to lose if you have two of these guys. It's so good. It is impossible to lose, literally. Uh, okay, how about, so for this, it's got to be Disrupt Destiny. This, yeah. this is the and best then, thing. And then Knife, and then Grenades, and then the Aura. Yeah, yeah. okay, I think, I think this is my finalized tier list for tryhards. Now let me make one for Casuals. The worst <laughs> thing has got to be the Throwing Knife. I Casuals... It is so fucking hard for casuals to make good use of the throwing knife because you need to aim train, you need to min-max your, your melee weapon to synergize with it, and you need to take the flamer. This has, like, the least build variety for it to shine, 
This has, dude, this thing is, for this to really shine, you've got to fucking have specific rolls on your weapon and use the weapon a specific way. You got to do all that for this to really shine. And, like, the more barriers of, but you need to do this first, the worse, the less casuals are going to, it, it overloads the mental stack, and then they got to, like, try train the aim. I think this yep, is, yep. I think this is the worst thing on here for casuals. Put I smoke think... grenade way down there for the exact same reasons, and I'm gonna add a reason. Um, okay. I think that people will literally like get blind when you throw a, sm a smoke yeah. grenade out yeah, there. Yeah, you might actually cripple they, your teammates sometimes. You're gonna anything. cripple your team, especially in a in a casual environment. So really be careful when you're thinking about taking smoke. I grenades. think Marty Dom is the next dude. Nah, dude, Marty Dom might be worse because like you're like one hit the whole game. promotes bad habits. Yeah, and if you can consistently. It's like uh, it's like zerking in payday. If you can consistently like, if you have a setup to consistently get yourself to only like half health for Marty Dom, you know, like like you're fucking Reginald, you're not a casual anymore, dude. You've graduated, and it's like you know, if you're just like set it and forget it, dude. You're man, you're it's bad. Yeah, uh, marksman's focus, dude. Fuck, I would say that this stuff is all bad. I feel like I would this say at least fire something. team fire team goes to the top of D because really? of its placement in the tree. True, true. Strictly because of that. And then I think um, this and this go over here because of the bad placement in the tree. Correct, Fuck, man. Yeah. Is this worse than smoke grenades? Because it's so poorly placed. If you take it, your build is just fucked. Dude. Yeah, the the zealot the zealot D tier things here. Are all trash they just for, like for actively fuck your build like they they, they actually just literally make the game harder to play c tier okay all right yeah i feel like i feel like this is pretty pretty good c tier yeah. bro who am i kidding motherfuckers will blow themselves up with it <laughs> they will yeah they they absolutely will yep even though it's like it auto corrects like you cannot blow it's so hard to blow yourself up by the way can i mention how this nose is insane because once you get to the 100%, you can use Scryer's Gaze and be at 99% and use your Blitz and not pop with it. Because Scryer's Gaze is active, until you physically ding the 100, it doesn't pop. Uh, Dre, uh, Extreme Dre, which is a good channel, by the way, he fucking... In his video, one of his like first videos where he was playing Gun Psyker like this, he put in a comment. He's like, hey, guys, I don't know what happened to this timestamp. I think it's a bug. I commented. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let the, let the fucking professional step in here. No, that's actually intended so that if you're using warp things and you start a charge as Scryers is about to ding at 100, you don't instantly kill yourself. So, no, it's not a bug. It's actually tech you can master. Uh... Brain burst is really bad for casuals. One of the things that I see people doing with brain burst is they're using it for boss damage or oh, like to God, damage monsters. Yeah. Um, just use a dueling sword or, or a the knife, knife guys. or your staff yeah. or anything else. It will Don't, do more damage. Th there, there. I think there's this huge misconception because there's specifically a penance that yeah. kind of like almost shapes brain burst into this boss damage thing. It's really not. It's really not for that. And then I feel like stealth is the best of these just because it's stealth and it's one button god mode. Yeah. Yeah, you could you could do some things All with right, this as B a casual tier. player. B tier. Fury probably belongs up here. It's really yep, fucking Fury the best. I think this uh, is the worst of the B tier. Ogre nade I think is second here. Really? I think it's it's that good. Yeah, yeah. I mean you do just throw it and everything dies. You know what? I think this might be the best because you just throw it and everything dies. That's it. Crusher pack running at you. You're getting overwhelmed. Pull it out. Throw it. You're not overwhelmed anymore. It's in a good spot, too, because it's right next yeah. to a node that makes enemies take 15% more damage from everything. And then it leads into Loyal Protector and into another node that allows enemies to take 25% more Dude, damage. Honestly, it's good. Honestly, I kind of like this setup as is. I think this is I think yeah. this is like on the money. Okay, A tier. Dude, A tier is fucking packed. Man, like, 70% of the things in the game are A tier or, like, S tier or, like, overpowered. That is crazy. There's a lot more bad stuff if you're, you know, optimizing the fun out of the game, as people would say. Man, being a casual is the way to be, dude. Just fucking... Oh, yeah. Play play with play with oh, anything yeah. and you have a good time? Damn. I wish I was like that's that. Why, 
That's why Space Brain 2 is doing so well right now. <laughs> okay. But, uh, uh, this is probably the best thing on here. Well, no, no. For casuals, this is the best thing on here. Fuck that. Uh, this is probably next. Yeah, those those two abilities will save games. The, uh, the chorus and mm, the yeah, Psyker I think, Shield. I think you're right. They'll save games. Yeah. And then um, Fury might be next. It's either Fury or like this. I like Fury being third because it's kind of a build enabler for yeah, certain weapons. True. And then this. And then. I'm kind of fine with these three the way they're set up. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that too. That's good. I feel like this is the worst thing on here. Uh, I, I almost want to say that. Well, I can't say that Shredder Frag Grenades are going to be low value in lobbies like when people are actually using them because you're getting value just from taking it because you're saving points on the talent tree yeah. so i i think it's in a good spot right there i'm content with this yeah i kind of like I'm the way this is this. set up honestly i think this is kind of good okay s tier uh shroud field uh, is definitely the strongest but is it the easiest yeah. thing to use that's the question no that's that's gonna be the psychers uh venting streak there i think it's gonna be the uh the easiest it's gonna have the most impact on the game yeah uh, you might have some it. you might have some some zealots who go into shroud field they pull up their thunder hammer they're about to do big damage on the boss and then they get knocked back because they don't know yeah yeah uh, like, how, to, like how to really Nurgle engage especially. that situation yeah, these yeah. burgle especially they don't they aren't like practiced at dodging the tailspin thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stunstorm I'd say probably Stunstorm. better like because of what we just mentioned, I could totally see yeah. you setting up and flubbing it and then it's like, well, fuck. Oh. I don't Momentum, know. Momentum Momentum Warp Siphon I think is better than than Momentum really? in this okay. case. All right. Yeah. I respect mostly because you're gonna get zealots who aren't getting those dodges, so they're not getting the momentum stacks yeah, back. Yeah, true. And they're it, it becomes harder to take advantage of. I kind of like the S tier. I kind of like. I like this stuff. too. Yeah. Okay, this one's gonna be hard. This one's gonna be a brutal experience, dude. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna say survivalist probably goes pretty low because you're not yeah, utilizing the, the ammo very well. Um. Fuck, dude. Wow. I think this so is if, also going to be... This is probably at the bottom. If there is an ability that completely breaks the casual player lobby, oh, wait, it's no, going to be voice of command. Voice yeah. of command I th is I think, above I think, I think, I think these, everything else. I think these two... Yeah, I think this actually goes into god tier. Yes. Well, you know you know what? Hold on. I can't believe I'm about to do this. Like, I, I actually feel fucking disgust. <laughs> I actually like feel disgusted with myself, but yeah. like I, facts are facts, and I can't deny that if you don't give a fuck, <laughs> dude, if you have these two things on the team when you're not good at the game, like damn, you guys, fuck. you guys will clear. Content you will win every single you time. You should not be clearing, <laughs> bro. You could be. You could go from struggling on normal damnation, put on the two crutches, and like beat Auric Maelstorms. Yeah. I'm not even joking. You'll probably have like a 70% win rate too. And uh, keep in mind, these are abilities that promote bad habits. So if you're trying well, to get not better this shit. at the game. Yeah, not that shit. That's not fucking. <laughs> Dude, you want to spam that. Either, eh? Yeah, you want to spam uh, that. But Smite promotes bad habits. Um, it's not something you want to bring into uh, a really Yeah, if you're like, group. okay, if you're like, okay, I want to actually like start getting good at this video game. You would never, you just, you put the Smite down, dude. She's busy, yeah. little bro. Um. Okay, I feel I'm kind of feeling this. Um, this is for casual play, right? Casual play. Uh, I think the focus target is better than the feel no pain. Really, feel no pain just makes yeah. it so you can get hit like 50 times and not go down. Though I feel like people care more. Well, then again, it's a bright yellow target. It gives everyone toughness, yep. stamina, and uh, fucking damage. It's it's so much benefit for the team. Um, a lot of casual better. teams fall apart whenever a monster appears. True. And so popping focus target on it, boom, 40% increased damage on the monster. Let's melt it. Go go go. Like it's it's huge value. Yeah, honestly, I think it might be better than this, but man, this pairs with something in the god tier, so it's kind of hard. Yeah, 
I kind of like this. Yeah. Yeah, organize from left to right as best to worst. This is for uh, tryhards. This is for casuals. What a... Uh... I don't I don't really have too much else to say. Yeah. What what a great game. Yeah, seriously, it's way better than that fucking garbage space marine too. Fuck.